Do you remember these Distress Oxide backgrounds from our last paper crafting project? Today I'll show you how to turn some of them into stunning cards in just minutes. No need to start from scratch. Let's use what we already have and create something beautiful together. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. So let's talk about some of the things we're going to be using today. Of course, we're going to start off with a few of our Distress Oxide backgrounds. We're not going to be using all of them today, but we will get to them eventually. Our card bases will be 110 pound recollections card in white. And then I have some die cuts that I cut from 65 pound recollections white as well. We're going to be using two different die sets. I have this quilt block die set from Momenta. Um, I've had this in my stash for a long time. I believe I bought it at Hobby Lobby, but I'm not 100% sure. And then I will be using my Brass and Bliss Foliage Trio die set again because I love this set. I have a pre-made card front left over from my white on white card video that I will link in the description below or up here in the corner. And I'm also going to be using this Hello Sentiment, which is from the Spellbinders Be Bold Sentiments Hot Foil and Die Set. I will also be using the Rubbernecker Stamps Exclusive Organic Set. Um, I got this from the 2019 Denver Stamp and Scrapbook Expo. It was a class exclusive. I have uh, a floral box die set that I cut on my Cricut that I am most likely going to be using on a card today. And then I have my Teflon bone folder. I have art glitter glue. I have Spellbinders best ever craft tape that I'll be using with my Sizzix die cut machine. And I'm also going to be using some score tape. So let's go ahead and get into the first card. The first project I'm going to make today is actually going to yield three different cards. I'm going to be using the quilt die from Momenta today, and I'm going to be using this die here. Um, the backgrounds I'm going to be using will be the red, the blue and violet, and the yellow backgrounds. And this is on the Canson Graduate watercolor paper. Um, this die, while it is really pretty, it cuts really difficult. So I'll be doing all of my die cutting off screen. But I did already go ahead and cut three of the background squares. And then I have three of the quilt outlines. I will also be utilizing the Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. Um, I did use that here when I made this outline. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut these three panels and then I'll be right back with you and we'll put one of them together. All right, I have my backgrounds all cut out and they are separated into their different shapes. Um, I also wanted to point out that these leftovers are just absolutely beautiful. They could very easily be used on their own. Uh, this one with a little extra trimming on the side. You could either use the square, the, the square die that comes with the set to trim these out. Or, you know, just trim this side down a little bit and then use this as kind of a Polaroid type setup with the extra space down here at the bottom. So just something that, you know, something to keep in mind. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to glue a quilt outline onto the background 
And don't worry, I'm not going to make you sit through this. I'll speed right through this part for you. Okay, so I have all three of these completed. Now all we need to do is start putting our pieces in. So for this particular design, I'm going to put the yellow in the four corners. And I'm just going to add some glue. And then I will pick up my pieces with my Studio Katia embellishment wand. Um, I do eventually want to get a, um, a different end for this. I haven't had any issues the few times I've used it with the black wax leaving a residue on my piece, but I have heard that could be a potential issue. So, so I would like to get a white one. Okay, so that is the first part of our quilt. And I think I'm going to use the blue for the triangles. Again, I will add some glue. And then I will pick up my pieces and line them up. All right, and then the last pieces will be my red pieces. And I don't know what this shape is called. Geometry wasn't exactly in my wheelhouse. So um, I, <laughs> I'll look that up and put it up on the screen for you. And there is our first finished quilt square. Isn't that pretty? Okay, and there we have our three quilt panels. I think these turned out so pretty. I hope these are in frame for you. If not, I will have close-up pictures on the blog. Okay, so the next step will be our card bases. So I will bring one in just for demonstrations. And I'm going to place this so that it has an equal distance around three sides. And then I will stamp my sentiment down here on the bottom. So for that, let me get out my Mini Misty. My well-loved and falling apart Mini Misty. And I'm just going to go ahead and line this up in here. And I'm going to figure out about where I want my quilt piece as well. Just to give me an idea of where to put the sentiment. And I'm going to take the quilt piece out before I actually stamp it. I'm going to be using the Rubbernecker Organic Stamp Set. And I really, really love this sentiment. You are simply the best. And I have used it multiple times. And I'm most likely going to use it more in the future. So I will just kind of line that up kind of in the middle. And I'm sorry if my head is in the way. So we will call that good. And then I will get that out of the way. For the ink, I'm going to use my Genie K Designs Amalgam Ink. Um, this is re-inked with Obsidian Black. And then I will just do my sentiments. And I'm going to go ahead and do all three cards the same. So here we have our card base. And then with the quilt square on there, it, that is just going to look so pretty. So I'm also going to use my 
club scrap centering ruler. It's just, it is the best purchase that I've made in a long time. This will be lined up at two and an eighth. And then centered at just a little over one and a half on each side. So I will go ahead and get some score tape put on the back of my pieces. And then I will be getting these cards made. Okay, and there we have our first three cards. These are so pretty. This would make a gorgeous set to give to a friend or family member for a birthday or for Christmas gifts. For my next card, I'm going to be using this green background that I made. Again, this is on the Canson Graduate watercolor card. And I'm going to be using this center die on the Brass and Bliss Foliage Trio die set. I have a couple other things over here that I'll be using. Um, I may or may not be using this white leaf that is left over from the white on white card design video that I did. And I am definitely going to be using this background. Um, if you watched that video before, you may recall that this background has score lines that I just put on there from my scoreboard. And for the sentiment, I'm going to be using this very simple hello that is from the Spellbinders Be Bold Sentiments. It is a hot foil and die cut set, and it is foiled in gold foil. So again, I'm going to jump off camera here for a minute. And I'm going to die cut one or two of these leaf shapes. And I will be back with you momentarily. Okay, so I have some of my leaves cut out. Um, I thought I would show you how I take the leaves out of the dies. Um, they press in pretty tight. Most solid shape dies like this have little holes. There are four of them here, one in the top leaf, one on each of the bottom leaves, and then one down here. Um, I usually take my Tim Holtz pokey tool and I try and press the paper out, but I don't want to poke a hole in my die cut. Um, so usually for this particular die, I'm able to get the stem started. And then what I do, I extend, I extend my pokey tool all the way out to the end. And then I will just run it underneath the die, or uh, I'm sorry, underneath the paper to separate it from the, from the die. Now there have been times when I've done this and I have ripped my die cut. There have been times I've done this and I have scratched my die cut, but most of the time it just comes out clean like that. So that's a little tip for you if you have issues with that. Um, I think before I get to my background, I want to use some Scorched Timber Distress ink just to go around the edge of these leaves. And I'm only going to use one of them, but I can't decide which one I want to use. So I will do the inking real quick and then make my choice. Because they're so pretty and they're all so different. Um, I am just using an eyeshadow brush that I picked up at Walmart. And then this is just going to give it a little bit of definition. I think 
but I really like this leaf here. It is just different looking. It's got lots of different color in it. And I didn't bend the leaves up quite as much when I was edging them, edging them with the Scorched Timber Distress Ink. So we'll go ahead and use that one. I will bring in my background. And now I have to decide, do I want it the exact size of my card or do I want to trim it down a little bit? And I think I want to trim this down just a little bit. I, I have better luck with that than trying to put a full, full size onto a card front. So I'm just going to, with my Tim Holtz guillotine, I'm going to take off about an eighth of an inch on all four sides approximately an eighth of an inch it is not easy to get that perfect cut on this particular machine so okay that's close enough So that'll have a nice little frame on it. So now I know that if I put that there, it will be pretty. But let's see what happens if I first put a white leaf down. And I don't know if you can tell, but my white paper here is two different colors. Um, I'm not sure what I cut the background out of. It may have been uh, watercolor paper. I don't know. Um, or it could have been a different brand of white cardstock. Either or. So, but that will still give a little bit of difference to my white leaves. And then I could put my green leaf on like that. And that would be really pretty. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And I, I for, for a very short moment, thought, oh, well, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll use the scorched timber and go around these leaves. But I want to keep this white. And I know if I try and do the, the inking around the edges, that it will just turn into a hot mess. So I think what I'm going to do first is I will get this onto my card. So I will br bring my score tape back in. And again, if you missed a previous video, I use a little acrylic block to cut my score tape with. It just gives me a nice straight line. Or if I need an angled line, depending on what I'm taping, um, I can get that easily accomplished with my little piece of tape or my little acrylic block. Okay, and then I'm going to have my scoring go this way with the weight on the folded side of the card. So I'm going to turn everything at the same time. And then I will get this lined up. Again, I apologize if my head gets in the way. Okay, so there is the start of our card. And then I will use my art glitter glue to glue the leaves into place. And there really is no rhyme or reason where this goes, so I will just pick that location right there. And then I will get my watercolor leaf put down. 
And then the only thing with this is I want to make sure it is offset from the white leaf. But again, it doesn't matter how far off it is, just that it is offset. Now, I may have put that in the wrong place, but you know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to cry about it. Um, if after a while I still don't like it, I have three more leaves that I can easily recreate this with. And now I'm going to place my hello. And I think I'm going to put that down there in the corner. I will definitely get out my tweezers to help me place this down. And then I'm just going to get this lined up. And there we go another finished card. So for the last card I'm going to make today, I'm going to do a, another layered die cut. I have this design that I cut on my Cricut machine. Um, I think I found the flower shape in Cricut Design Space, and then I put it into this little frame. So I kind of sort of designed it. I kind of sort of didn't design it kind of thing. Um, I'm going to layer two or three of these together. And then I'm going to put them on one of my backgrounds. So it'll be kind of like that. All right, so I have three layers glued together. And that gives me a really nice thick die cut to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and measure this because I think it's an off size. Let's see. It's about four and a half inches tall by just a little over two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to have to do some funky cutting on that one. And now I just need to decide what background I want to use. Um, I know I don't want to use the green one. I've already done green today. Um, I don't like these cleanup sheets, so I'm going to take those out of the mix. Uh, let's see. That's pretty, but I don't want it for this. I don't like the texture on that one or this one. So that leaves me with two blue and teal, a kind of a tealy green, and then a wilted violet in pink. So that's kind of pretty. And that's kind of pretty. Mm, not a fan. We'll get rid of that one. Um, I kind of like this one. Um, it has some interesting texture if I cut it in this location in the in the different petals. And then this is still kind of a solid, but there's still a little color variation. So this one is a possibility. And I don't like that one. So we'll just go ahead and use this one. And we need to, let's see, we'll cut the width a little bit wide. Um, so this is approximately, well, we'll cut it at three inches wide. And I want to make sure to have this side. Okay. Yep, 
yeah I want to get as much of that middle piece as I can so I will come down here and take off about a quarter of an inch um, these panels were cut to six inches tall so I can line that up and trim it. Maybe I'll take off another, I'll take off another quarter of an inch on the bottom. Okay, yeah, I like that. So now I will just cut this to four inches tall. Let's see, four inches, correct? Ooh, boy, I almost cut that wrong. Let me double check this. Four and a half. It is four and a half inches tall. Okay, yeah, four and a half. Okay, and now I just need to get my width cut. Yeah, I'm really going to like that. So again, the width for that is just a little over two and a half just a hair over so there is two and a half and then i will just come over just a, just the tiniest bit and let's see how that lines up Yeah, that lines up great. So now to make sure I get this lined up perfectly, since it is really close, I am going to use my Misty to help me with that. Um, I have used, or I have done this a lot. Um, and I think I'll even put my magnet in there to hold this in place because I have a big enough big enough hole there that I can do that okay so I will just add some glue around the edge all right I've got my glue on there and then I will set this down and just let it fall. And then I will put my big stamping block over the top of it just to press that down a little bit. And this card is just, it's going to be super, super simple. Um, I don't have a sentiment picked out for it and actually this might be one of those cards where I don't put a sentiment on the outside but just put something on the inside when I know who the recipient is going to be and the reason the recipient is getting it. I think that turned out so nice and I love the different color that you can see and the different texture. And I really hope this is in frame. It's, it's so hard for me to tell with my camera above me. But let's go ahead and get this onto a card front. So we will get some score tape on the back. Okay, so our statement piece is four and a half inches tall. So I'm going to have a half an inch border on 
each side top and bottom and then I will center this on the card at like what is it one and an eighth on each each side no one and a quarter And there we go. Here are all of our finished cards. I just love how this floral frame pops off this blue image. It is so simple yet still so elegant. And then we have our foliage die from the Brass and Bliss die set. But I think my absolute favorite are these quilt block cards. I think with the three different colors, they just turned out so pretty. And I have three bonus cards for you. Remember when we were die cutting our images and I said how the extra piece would make a gorgeous card? Well, I wasn't kidding. These turned out so nice. And I didn't even have to recut the inner pieces. They came from my white frames for the original cards. This red one looks a little bit wonky because it was cut kind of crooked, but that's okay. It still turned out very nice. What do you think? I'm curious to know. Which card is your favorite or which set of cards is your favorite? Let me know down in the comments. Until then, thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a fantastic week. Bye!